Oh my god, we made it, we made it! Good morning. It's about 10 to 8 in the morning. Someone else is still sleeping. My god, it's so cold and rainy here. But uh, time to get up and make a tea. My god, it's so cold and rainy. I don't know if you can, if you're going to see. Yeah, let me open the door. It's October, the start of October in Australia and it's bucketing down with rain and it's freezing cold and it's really dark and we just had daylight savings um, click over um, yesterday so I've woken up an hour early than I normally do and yeah the house is showing it's 17 degrees inside so I'll just put the heater on because I'm freezing and I need to have a shower. Time to make a tea and have breakfast and get ready soon. Goodbye Melbourne. Darwin, here we come. <laughs> en route to the airport. First we gotta go to Officeworks actually because we need to print off our entry form into the Northern Territory so we had to fill it in and it said that you need to have a paper copy otherwise you'll need to redo it when you get there. So we don't own a printer so we have to go print it first. <laughs> We've allowed enough time for that. I'm actually really nervous. Are yeah? Yeah like I don't normally get nervous when when I'm doing something naughty. I'm not doing something naughty. We're allowed to go. We should be allowed to go. It's just that they like to make money out of the situation. So like two, three days ago on the news, they had a segment saying that Melbournes are escaping to Darwin for a holiday and there's police stopping you at the airport to ask what you're doing and where you're going because you need a valid reason. So. Yeah, I don't normally get nervous. Uh, can you hear it in my voice? I can. My voice gets really croaky when I get nervous and I have like this nauseous feeling in my stomach like I get this um, wound up anxiety feeling. And then I cough. Did you hear me cough today? I hate that feeling, no. Yeah, um, I remember you're like, oh, I haven't heard you cough in so long. <clears throat> but I was coughing like that this morning in the shower because it's almost like that nauseous like feeling. But yeah. That'll pass Put through. the positive vibes out. I'm sure once I reach border security, I'll be like, woo! So yeah, we will give you an update shortly. Hey guys, we made it on the aeroplane. I couldn't film going through security and at the terminal because I didn't want to attract any attention to myself. But we are definitely on route to Darwin and have made it through the borders of Melbourne. So enjoy the ride. Oh my God, we made it, we made it. Okay, so day one of Darwin. I'm gonna have to backtrack what happened yesterday because I am filming this on day two. So, Bear with me. So as you saw in the morning, we got up. Our flight was at 12.50 p.m. I made sure I checked all the documents, made sure I was across all the information that we had to provide. So on the Victorian coronavirus website, there was nothing. It says that you're free to travel if you have a valid reason. And then if you were entering Darwin, you need to have a entry form filled in and printed out because they need the hard copy to give them when you arrive. So we made sure we had all the documents and were prepared. So we get to the airport and it is a ghost town. Um, they were actually doing coronavirus testing in T4 and we had to go around in circles to find how to enter the car park because we didn't need to go through coronavirus testing. We managed to find our way. The 
car park was actually pretty full. It started on level three because the lower two are uh, valet and the entire car park was pretty full. But we managed to find a car park close. There was hardly anyone around, maybe just one or two people. You could see that they were wearing their uniforms, so they were probably going to work. We arrived at the Jetstar check-in, and we did have some difficulties. I don't know why, I just said, error, the machine cannot print out a bag tag. So I had to get some assistance from the desk, and she was very lovely. She helped us, the bags went off, and then we take the escalators to go up. Standing there was four or five police. They were just there to make sure that if you do get rejected, that they're there in case you do cause a ruckus. We had to line up and get our temperatures checked. They had to check our ID. And then the lady started interrogating me and she was asking me what my reason was for traveling. And I told her my reasons and she thought or assumed that I was moving there because I told her that I don't know when I'm coming back because I don't have a return flight back to Melbourne. She was asking me for documents to prove that I've sold the house or that I bought a house. And I said, well, don't own a house and documents to provide you. Um, we were traveling on compassionate care. So she pulled us out of the line and she said that because we don't have any documents to prove, she's just completing out a form. So she filled in a form of both of our details and the reasons for traveling. And she said that she can't stop us from traveling, but she will be handing this form into the authorities in Darwin. And it is up to them if they want to accept us. And she also said that if we can organize some kind of doctor certificate or something in the meantime to show Darwin because she said that Melbourne have done their part and now it's up to Darwin to let us in. I was annoyed because we were supposed to leave three days early before this incident, before it went on the news. I don't know if that was happening before it was on the news. I know that people were flying to Brisbane for the grand final. I actually hate the AFL and I didn't even know that it's on the same weekend that I'm there. So I was worried, but she did say to me that they are just trying to avoid people going on holidays. We got through and it was fine. There was only one terminal. Before that you board the flight, they give you a little pamphlet and it's got a mask in there and some wipes for you. If you want to wipe down your area in on the plane, we get on the plane, everything's fine. The flight takes off, the staff are absolutely lovely. They were joking with us and now for the fun part. So there was a bit of excitement on the aeroplane, which I have never seen. I've flown international and domestic and I've seen people get drunk but not like this. When we were at the airport and we were checking in, there were girls, two guys, and they were young um, and they were a bit rowdy and I didn't th think anything of it until I saw one of them towards the end of the flight get off her seat, stumble down the laneway. And it was pretty funny because Marcel went to the toilet and they only allow one person in the toilet at a time, even though they've got two at the back. It's just because of social distancing. And I can hear them talking to her and they're like, what have you taken? They thought like she was on drugs or something. She was saying, I can't see, I can't see, I'm going to be sick. Anyway, my son comes out of the toilet and I told him what happened. And there was a lady standing in the aisle that came to speak to the stewardess. And she said that she saw them swigging wine out of pump bottles at the airport. So I was like, this is hilarious. Like these kids just obviously don't care. They have Pommy accents, so I think they were traveling home and they probably just do not care whatsoever. Like just get me out of this situation ASAP. Like we haven't even landed in Darwin yet. And yeah, it was pretty hilarious. And the eyes were all black from probably vomiting and crying and her hair was a mess. And then she just sat in her chair like, oh, like I could see her cause she was in front of us. And then when we were landing, we had really bad turbulence and the flight attendants, they came and stood next to her and they were like, oh, we just want to make sure that you're safe. I don't know what that was about. And then when the, we arrived in Darwin, they had the medic team there and they let her go through everything straight away and we had to line up and wait for hours. So I thought, oh, maybe I should have pulled a stunt like that. I thought they were going to kick her off or deny her. So that was some pretty exciting trip to get to Darwin on the aeroplane. Now, I will go through the checkpoint. When we arrived in Darwin, we had to line up in the immigration section. So if you were flying international, basically. So it was very long wait. I think it was about two hours. 
because they had to talk to every person they had to ask you have you been in contact with anyone with coronavirus have you been overseas in the last 14 days i can't remember now what the questions were but then we had to fill in the form and it was straightforward she just said are you aware that you'll be taking two weeks of quarantine and i said yes i am and stamp 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 and border security were there so you, i couldn't film because it's illegal to have your mobile phone they would have fined me once we get through the immigration checkpoint we get escorted by a staff member i don't even know why like they just escort you to these little barricades and there's another staff member standing there which i think is from howard springs facility because they gave us a form to fill in the form was basically just your details virtual requirements and um, drugs or alcohol or something like that and we took our own bags off the carousel i think one bus already went and then they had a second bus waiting for us because we were at the back of the plane and they only disembarked from the front and it was all coordinated like each row went at a time and they also had a spaced out on the plane but each row had a time to go which i thought is a lot better than like normally when we land and then everyone just gets up and starts getting their bags out straight away but i thought that they should do this all the time actually because it was very relaxed very calm everyone was quiet you could hear a pin drop we're just all waiting to get off also that's probably the longest i've ever worn my mask because in melbourne it's mandatory to wear a mask and i avoid going out just so i don't wear my mask because I don't like it and it makes me feel anxious and I feel like I'm suffocating but I would just like pull it out a little bit just breathing oxygen I get anxious flying like I get sweaty palms my heart races dry mouth those sort of things and I felt like it was harder to breathe to calm myself down for the turbulence because I had a mask on so I had to pull that back just to get some oxygen in when I landed in Darwin I felt like I was a prisoner or I was an immigrant that was coming to another country and I had no money, no plans, nowhere to stay. Border security was there, dressed up with their guns and escorted us out of the airport as well onto the bus and everything's barricaded so you're just following the barricades, following the line so you don't jump any borders, so you don't run away and straight onto the bus. We put our luggage on the bus, get on the bus for a 30 minute drive. It was actually really quick, very comfortable with air conditioning. When we arrived, they had this big prison gate, like really tall barbed wire fence and the big gate opens up when we arrived and then closes behind. <laughs> the nurse came on board and introduced herself, the head nurse, and then she just let us know that we will be getting corona tested tomorrow and on day 11 before we leave to make sure that we're negative as well before we leave. They took our luggage off for us off the bus and then we just collected it and then we had to take a long walk to this massive hall. This was the icing on the cake of feeling like a prisoner. I understand social distancing and whatnot, but it's just a surreal experience to feel like you're either in primary school again going on camp or I'm an adult now and I'm a prisoner basically. So we get taken to this hall and on the hall are X marks and pink arrows. So every person stands on one X mark and it's 1.5 meters distance away from each person. We were all just lined up and the hall was full. Like we got there and we were pretty much half of the hall was already full and that was another two hour wait. They handed us out little water bottles, ice cold water, which was really good. And they also gave us a little bag of snacks. So there was muesli bars, biscuits, and a piece of fruit to get us through. The check-in was a very long process. Once we got to the front, they just allocated us a room because Marcel and I are traveling together. They allocated us a room next to each other. We'll show you the room tomorrow. Once we left the desk, we collected our meals and two nurses took us to our rooms. They have to work in pairs and allowed to split up. I made a joke just in case we jumped the fence and run away. She took us to our rooms and she said, I can't split you up. So we had to walk around our section and drop off the other people because we went in fours. Got dropped off and we got settled in. And for dinner we had roast pork and roast lamb and we had roast vegetables with those. 
I don't eat either of those. So last night's dinner, I was vegetarian and I just ate the veggies and the we were so tired last night. I was like, I just want to have a shower and go to bed. One thing that they do allow you to do at Howard Springs is to order click and collect from Woolworths, Coles, even Big W and Kmart if you do need anything. So we did a coal shop for the two weeks. It ended up being about $100. The meals are quite small here, but it is enough for me. But we got some extra snacks just in case we do get hungry. I did overhear that you are allowed to order an extra meal if you are extra hungry and you need more food. So that's also an option. And after the cold shop, I just went and had a shower, put my pajamas on, got into bed and went to sleep. Thank you for watching day one of quarantine in Howard Springs facility in Darwin, Northern Territory. Don't forget to subscribe so you get a notification and a reminder when the next video is uploaded. Comment down below if you have any questions that you want to know about staying in Howard Springs quarantine. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Bye!